In this video, I'll be doing a review of Raspberry MC on the Raspberry Pi. It is XBMC running on Debian on the Raspberry Pi. Now, this is a bit different from my standard review because normally I would just be reviewing the software side and then running it on my system, which could completely different to you, your hardware. But this video, we're reviewing more of a device as a whole and take a look at both how the software runs and the hardware. I've done a video in the past about how the Raspberry MC media player can play different types of video and I found its sweet spot is more around HD 720. It can do lower bandwidth HD 1080 but not really much beyond that. It can't really do Blu-ray. So if you're an audiophile and want the highest quality, Raspberry MC is definitely not for you. Uh, there's other media players. In fact, that's probably what I would suggest. There are other media players around. But let's look at what this cheap little Raspberry Pi that wasn't necessarily designed as a media player can do. This is the main menu on XBMC. We'll take a quick look through here first just to show you if you're unfamiliar with what XBMC is like. So on the TV I've got various TV episodes, um, <clears throat> quite a few. This is linked to the NAS via SMB. And I've got a shared library running on it so it's a little bit quicker. Uh, this is a copy of Futurama, HD720, Dolby Digital Surround Sound, which all plays beautifully on the Raspberry Pi and Raspberry MC. Notice it's a little bit slow at loading compared to uh, other systems. Now, unfortunately, we won't get a decent view of this because I'm recording off the TV. Now, I can't do a screen capture off the Raspberry Pi for obvious reasons. It's nowhere near powerful enough. We're just showing the scanning around work in there, and as you can see, it's pretty well responsive. So I close that and go towards a movie. I don't want to spend too much time on this because I did this before but uh, let's just grab a couple of movies. Come on this is near instant on my quad core AMD system. So I'm just going to change by sort by age. I've pressed the keyboard just responsiveness. But if you're not worried about that, if you're prepared to wait, hey look, it isn't that bad. Right, sort by descending on year. Brand new movies first. Actually, I went back too far there, but come on. Right, top of the list. What? Which one is a Blu-ray? That one, I believe. Just look at the information about it. Dolby True HD Blu-ray Disc. A little tricks you can do with XBMC. Search by cast. Who's in what on my movies. Let's see what Jeremy Rayner's in. Oh, he was in The Bourne Legacy in 2012 as well. That's just on my system. Of course, he's probably in a lot more things than that. There you go. And I could just switch across and look at that movie information. Back to Hansel and Gretel Witch Hunters. <laughs> Just talk amongst yourselves for a little bit. Oh, come on, come on. Ah, right, here we go. Ah, oh, buffering. Don't have the issue on my other system. I'm not blagging about it, I'm just saying it how it is. This is what you're up against if you're going to try and play a Blu ray file on here. It's well, it ain't gonna work. The the CPU power in the Raspberry Pi just is not good enough, and yet you could try overclocking it, and that might well help. I've not overclocked mine. I don't necessarily recommend doing that. It, it's entirely your choice if you want to risk breaking your system. That's up to you. I could never possibly recommend that. So, well, I'm going to try and continue this now. People are getting bored here. Come on. Right. So I closed it and let's go for something slightly better. Uh, I think Taken 2. Let's look at that one. That's just 1080, isn't it? DTS HD 1080. That's fine. Play that. Ah! 
Oh yeah, much better on responsiveness. That can actually play HD 1080. Looks fine there. Can I skip around okay? But did they say performance is improved? So perhaps my conclusion at the end might be a bit harsh. But I'll probably still stand by what I've written. I kind of did the conclusion before I actually did the review of the system since I haven't powered it up for about a month. I've been using it for a little while. Hmm. Let's just go across to the system and system settings. You can see what we're able to customise on here. So the appearance. Yeah, you can get various different skins for XBMC. Customise the fonts. Yeah, various different settings there. Under video, yeah, look, there's nothing that specific. You would seal this under XBMC. So let's just go right down to something that's a bit more unique with it. System. Video output. As you can see there, HG1080, 60 frames a second. Audio output, right. A little bit different to a standard XBMC system. You don't have any of the Dolby True HD and DTS HD options. I've got HDMI output. Yep, that's a standard. That goes straight into my HDMI amp. Could also go to HDMI TV, in which case you might want to lower the speaker count to 2 or 2.1. How low, well, how high does it go? Let's carry on around. Ah, oh, it goes up to 7.1 speakers. Yeah, that's respectable. And you've got the options to tick there if you've got a Dolby Digital or a DTS capable receiver. Input devices. You can plug remote controls in here. I can't remember the make of mine now. I just searched on for a Windows Media Player remote control and it's literally as plug and play. And you can get loads of add-ons for XBMC. Let's try TV information. So that's different TV scrapers you can add into XBMC. But I reckon XBMC is a cracking media player. I absolutely love it. I, this is my main way of getting TV nowadays. Here's what I thought of Raspberry MC. It's a bit difficult perhaps trying to review this in terms of my standard distros, but hey, look, I've done the review <laughs> scores here, so let's just carry on. So easy to use. Absolutely it is. Ease of installation, yes, it's a copy and paste the ISO file. Sorry, that's a bit simplified there. Write the ISO file onto an SD card and power up the Raspberry Pi. Styling, oh, I quite like the styling of XBMC. Boot up speed, <laughs> no, it is very slow. But on the upside, it's such low energy usage, you can always leave it on. What does it matter about boot up speed? Responsiveness. No, 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 no. Honestly, you compare it to uh, an x86 system with, on mine, it's quad core, 3.2 gigahertz. Responsiveness is pretty poor. Um, but then you've got to balance that up against uh, the cheapness of the Raspberry Pi, the low energy usage compared to a more expensive system. In which case, I would say, if you're prepared to wait a few seconds, what does it matter? Number of bugs. I didn't find any. So the good points. It's a great way to turn Raspberry Pi into a low-cost media player. And it can play, i say here, up to low bandwidth 1080p video. The bad points though, its comfort spot for videos really is around 720p. Uh, there are better Android players than the, that aren't really much more expensive than the Raspberry Pi. It lacks the ability to play Blu-ray quality with Dolby True HD and DTS HD. Only if you're an audiophile does that mean anything. Otherwise, pff, what do you care really? Play a 10 gig HD1080 file, what does it matter? And last one here, indexing files takes ages, but it's you could use the shared library on the, uh, say, a NAS instead. So using a MySQL library on a NAS, much better. And that's what I did for this video. But overall, I have decided to score it at 70%. That's based on how the Raspberry Pi is compared to, like say, the Android media players, a proprietary media player, or an x86 media player. I think it's worth that. But honestly, that score's almost arbitrary. It could be anything. This was just a review of it. So thanks for watching. See you later.